But we see the obvious now line of confusion in the stones of emptiness. Now that is the obvious description of what I am referring to as the ley line and the standing stone in perfect relationship. Ley line and stones. Line and stones. Ley line and standing stones or whatever term of stone you would like to call them. It's all the same. So that's exactly what we're talking about. But before we move on and talk about that a little further, let's kind of clear up the condition of which the scripture is being written in. Okay? So what we're talking about is who is going to inherit the earth in the kingdom age. Because this is the day of the Lord, Armageddon. We see that basically the sacrifice, as it's called here, this judgment and this sacrifice the slaughter has already taken place. We see that the unicorns and the bulls come down as the lawgivers. And then we see a lot of symbolic designation of the cancel out of spiritual truth in this world. And you really need to watch probably the arrival of the locust to understand what all this is about. I'm not going to go over it all again. This is just the parts that you haven't heard yet or the details that you don't yet understand. So basically, this is, in, this is who is going to inherit the land in the kingdom age after this war of Armageddon has taken place. Okay, so it says, but the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl, also the raven, shall dwell in it. So once this land is back under possession of the fallen ones, now these birds here begin to be symbolic designation for those men and women who have worked who you would term as the Illuminati or the Dark Cabal. These are the symbols for the Dark Cabal, the mystery religion characters who have worked so tirelessly to bring about this condition. And we find out that once they possess the land again, one of the things that they're going to do is that they are going to restretch out the line of confusion upon it and the stones of emptiness. Basically, they're going to reset up the old desolations, the old wastes. And we're going to show you some perfect biblical confirmation of that that will tie us right back up to what I just said. So this, keep this in mind, this is after we've had Armageddon. This would be what would be termed as the kingdom age. But I'm telling you that it is not a kingdom age for us. This is a physical kingdom age that the fallen Lord of this earth believes he's going to inherit the earth. And this is the promised kingdom inheritance that he even tried to offer Christ himself. Okay, so just like you hear that saying where they say that they've sold them souls to the devil and that you hear those in the music industry and even Hollywood have done it for fortune and fame. Well, this is the gift that is dangled in front of their face that in this kingdom age, they are shown that they will be the possessors and the inheritors of this world. And that's what this whole scripture is all about. And it's going to be the habitation of dragons and a court for owls. Now you can read the rest of this and make the connections yourselves. I just needed you to understand that point that that's where we are. We're talking about the kingdom age. This is who's going to possess it, and this is what they plan on doing once they have it under their complete control again. Now, for association of these birds of heaven being connected in the day of Armageddon in a negative way, let's look at this. This is going to be the battle of Armageddon, and what do we see here? And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. Once again, there's those birds. Now, what are they going to do? Gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now, that's the fallen God of this earth. Babylon the great, the great star, the great dragon, the great God. That's the fallen God. This supper, this day of Armageddon, is not of our loving Father. I'll be back.